Hello and welcome to another Arranger interview. We have with us Hazel Hannam. How are you, Hazel? Hi, Craig. I'm really well, thank you. Nice to really, speak to you. It's really lovely to see you and thank you for coming on board, uh, Choir Community. We're delighted to have you and your lovely arrangements um, on our site. Thank and you. We've some, some great sales already, so I'm going to sort of big, big up your, your arranging <laughs> later on in the interview to make sure we get some sales out of this. It'll be really great. <laughs> Um, but I'm going to start with the, the question I ask everybody, and you should be aware of this one. And I hope you, I don't know whether you've seen any of the other interviews. Um, I love hearing about people's first recollection of music when they were very little. So if you've got a memory that goes back almost the first time you became aware that music was a thing. Yes, I have. And it's really distinctive, actually. Um, I think I was about four and my dad asked me to sing a solo in a church carol service and all I remember of it was I was wearing my pyjamas and dressing gown because we lived over the church. <laughs> you had to be ready for bed straight after, after singing. Yeah, exactly. I, I couldn't <laughs> sort of stay behind and sign autographs or anything. Okay, that and, um, and I can't remember the song. It might have been Little Donkey or one of those sort of carols. But I remember the feeling of standing on the stage and singing. And it wasn't the fact that I was singing to people. It was the fact how the singing made me feel. I, I remember thinking, um, you know, it maybe sounds a bit corny, but it felt like I was flying. You know, it felt like it, this was beyond me. This was bigger than me. Um, and it was, yeah, very distinctive. Um, something, yeah. something you were meant to do. I think so. I, well, I just, I, I just experienced a, a feeling of um, I, I could hear my voice for the first time. I think, um, yeah, I, and and oh. it just gave me this just amazing inside feeling that um, that I wanted to keep going. I, I suddenly it was like a you know a penny dropping moment in Very my four funny. years of life. <laughs> and then did you continue doing solos? from then on all the way through your your childhood um yeah I suppose more so yes I did I did carry on doing singing um and then because I was brought up in a kind of a church uh background my parents were very religious and um so I I was always <laughs> dragged along and then um but there were other musical people in the church so we used to sing um like in small groups ensembles I was always harmonizing Mm. Um, my dad had a, a double cassette tape recorder at home and I would literally record myself singing a melody and then I'd swap the tapes around and record myself singing a harmony. It was basically a two track <laughs> uh, recording system. Same thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I learned to play the guitar. I learned a little bit on the piano. So I was accompanying myself. Um, yeah. Any opportunity I would be standing up singing, so doing something. It seems like you you taught yourself a lot of this. Did you not have guidance from from parents and from uh, people at school, primary school, musicians who, uh, teachers who influenced you, who brought you on? You, you seem to do it all yourself. Um, you know, um, I suppose, yeah, you sort of pick up things from other people that you're kind of collaborating with. So um, I might learn a new guitar chord or somebody showed me, you know, once you know how to play a chord on the piano, you can translate that into any key. And those, you know, the one, four, five, of a of of your chord sequence um it, you know I'm not very mathematical but that really clicked I really understand how chords work um so on the whole no it was just experience and and chatting to people um and and learning from them but I didn't have any sort of formal music I, you know I didn't go to music college or anything like that but having said that in my um, sort of late 20s early 30s I went to jazz singing adult classes um, up in London at City Lit and um, and then I did jazz piano and again you know it really broadened my knowledge of how chords work um, you know not just a simple one three and five but you went on to the sixes and the sevenths and the thirteenths and the sharps and the um, you know all the different uh -huh. types of yeah, yeah, so it was no. all harmony. So I was kind of gathering it all in and loving it all. I can resonate um, with that um, curiosity about harmony. I had the same thing when, when I was, you know, singing as a child. And I we didn't want you to sing it. I wanted to know how it was put together, why it sounded and felt a certain way as well. So yeah, that's interesting yes. that you felt that. But I'm fascinated that 
a lot of this was inside you. It was something that that was, you know, came from inside you. It wasn't something that others ne necessarily <clears throat> sort of influenced you too much on. It was something that was already there that you that you fostered and you nurtured from from within yourself. That's that's really yeah, fantastic. definitely yeah, amazing. You leapt ahead a bit there to sort of um, you know add up. Like, <laughs> Um, is there anything back in, uh, well, I want to find out what was the first record or CD that you bought or owned? Um, you uh, are, we, are we talking vinyl? Are we talking, uh, well, what are we talking? Well, I'll tell you um, the first song I heard again that kind of changed my life <laughs> oh. um, was actually a record that my, my older brother had bought and it was an Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong record, vinyl. And the first track was Summertime. And, you know, again, it's another sort of real cliche, but I remember that was the first time I'd ever heard Ella Fitzgerald singing. Um, and I didn't know that someone could sing like that. And so I would play the whole record, you know, I knew it inside out. I was recreating how she sang mm. um, and all the little scat solos I was copying. Um, again, you know, and it's all, you, you look back and you think, yeah, I was just building up that sort of knowledge of of harmony and and melody and and swing <clears throat> and all the other kind of styles within the jazz yeah um, what a place world. to start though with with ella and yeah Gary. i mean that's an incredible <laughs> incredible place to start not yeah. all of us were that lucky to to come across <laughs> that music so uh, so early and so yeah and so in your early singing life you got into jazz a lot i noticed in your in your biog um you you really went into the jazz scene and uh, and discovered other singers and other songs and, and yeah and studied that a lot yeah did you study yeah. that sort of in uh, uh, um, academically at all um only from doing uh, um courses you know adult classes where it was a saturday morning each week um for for an hour and a half or two hours um you know the teacher would bring a new song and everyone would learn it and then you'd you know you discuss it and sing it and try different things with it right. and improvise um so yeah it was just adult classes but as you know and they were really enjoyable but you know again I was learning stuff that I probably didn't even realize I was learning <laughs> um, just adding to the uh the tools uh, yeah. that would come in handy in the future so your early choral experiences were at church when you were little and then growing up but they're more more church based um that was the kind of music you were singing when did you did you sing in a choir at school in uh, secondary school yeah secondary school definitely i was in a choir um and again i you know i i uh it that was probably more choral music although um yeah no it was quite a broad ranging um different styles musicals and and choral kind of thing um but yeah again it's that it's it's completely different from singing a solo you're now singing as part of a group and um you know work being working as a kind of machine <laughs> rather yeah. than as an individual you know you're part of a community really um and, and all learning how to choir <clears throat> in your at school at that age were you thinking watching the conductor saying oh I, I could do that or I could I could do better I could do better than they're doing you know which, were you thinking um, then this is something I could I could no do? I, in, in all honesty no um the music teacher we were just following her instruction I, I wasn't thinking oh, I'd love to run anything you know no I wasn't thinking along those lines I was more interested in the boys on the other opposite side of the room in the boys half of the choir um but yeah I think that was that was probably the extent of it. I, yeah, um, it, it's just it was just that enjoyment of group singing in four part harmony that mm. that kept me going in there, but finding it all very interesting. So your first conducting experience, um, how did that happen? Yeah, I think so. I'd I'd been doing jazz singing um, for private parties um, up and down the country for probably getting on for ten years. And it was coming to the end of its enjoyable life span, um, late nights, long weekends, you know, sort of lots of driving, hard work, um, drunk people trying to snatch the microphone off you. <laughs> so do you know any ABBA? Uh, which of course <laughs> I do, but that wasn't on my set list. Um, yeah, so that, that kind of came to a natural end, but it coincided with um, watching Gareth Malone do his very first um program where he went into a boys school in London yeah to see if he could get them singing and 
I, I remember thinking, oh my goodness, that is absolutely amazing. I've, I've never seen anything like it. And I thought, if he can do that with a group of boys who are not keen, you know, teenagers who don't want to sing, um, surely I could do that with adults who actually do want to sing. And it, it suddenly made me realise that um, that that singing is not something for certain people is actually it can be for somebody who's had no singing experience whatsoever mm -hmm. um if you get a group of them together teach them they can actually sound really really good like amazing yeah. um so that was a, another big moment for me I sort of thought wow that's incredible I wonder if I could do that um and so I just sort of set about hiring a venue doing a bit of advertising um, as far as conducting was concerned, the only the only conducting I'd ever done was one, two, a one, two, three, four, to bring in the band for my own singing. And that was it. Once you counted them in, you'd just get on with it. You know, you wouldn't be doing yeah. all the. Um, uh, so I started the choir, but then about a year later, I discovered um, the Association of British Choral Directors, or ABCD for short. And they were running um, conducting conducting courses um, up in London over, based over six months. And um, I kind of looked into them and I thought, oh, this could be really useful and helpful. Um, so I signed up to that. And that was really when I learned so much about conducting and leading people and leading music um, and how it kind of magically works, really. Mm. So that then I was able to incorporate that into my choir leading and what was that first choir called? Uh, Soundbites. So it's still right. going. Still, still going well. Still going. Yeah. So I started that in 2009. Um, so it's, it's 15 years this year. So really proud of that. Yeah. I think my, I'm almost the same time span with my. With yeah. My... I think there was a big explosion of choirs around that time, actually. You think maybe Gareth is a little bit, um, maybe he, ex he uh, encouraged that maybe. I think he might, yeah, yeah, I mean, certainly that was my experience. I don't know how, what else would explain, um, you know, how so many people started joining choirs. Um, I think he, he maybe just awakened the fact that it's not just your choral societies, it's not for people who read music, it's for people who don't read music, it's for people who don't sing. Um, <clears throat> and, and less and less people sing in churches um so, so singing's not a natural part of everyday life for most people now whereas once upon a time it really was um it was fascinating to find out yeah. recently you know I, I don't know whether you saw my interview with Frankie Armstrong but uh, you know Gittica discovered Frankie in the early 90s that's when she started her choirs in the mid 90s okay. which was 12 years before us and then uh, <laughs> Frankie had started in the mid 70s so <laughs> wow <laughs> <laughs> so it's been it's been happening for a while yeah but there's been these resurgences is almost um you know uh, revolutions and uh, sort of tidal waves of uh, of choir yeah. students, which we're all which we're all enjoying very much. Absolutely. Um, so I was no, I was interested with the, in your in your bikes as you were then approached by people to run choirs. So having done this first one, the other choirs seem to be people coming to you. Now that what yeah, this you may find this hard to answer, but what is it do you think about you that people found? Yeah, you, know, you were headhunted, weren't you? <laughs> it's happened it's happened a few times um hasn't it? Yeah, yeah i think you're you're uh overstating it really and <laughs> <laughs> really the um so one of the workplace choirs i they literally found my website um and they liked the look of what i did whereas they did find other choir leaders but they didn't like their style of music for example i don't know so maybe it was that you know i do pop that's my main thing. Um, and then other choirs were really word of mouth. So um, another workplace choir was a friend that I happened to know. And she said, oh, I'd love to. I'd love it. It would be great if we had a choir at our place of work. And our place of work is the sort of place that would have a choir. So she kind of sorted it all out and said, I know a choir leader. So, yeah, it... <laughs> um, my, my, my lady's choir, um, the Decibels, in Bookham was I was approached from another choir member in Soundbites, my current choir at the time. Um, she said, would you be interested in running a choir for the WI over in Bookham? So that's how that one started. So that it, I suppose it's more word of mouth 
that um headhunted sounds very posh. Also, I mean, it, it's an, you know an encouragement to others. You know, get, build yourself a good website, and people will, you know, if it's if it works well and it looks good, people will be interested. Yeah. In it too. So it's worth really yeah absolutely time and effort into that to make it make it look and sound good. So yeah, from the start. And um, I would recommend anybody goes go to uh, uh, Hazel's website as well to see how it's done. Um, so I all, all interested in lots of things. Uh, your favourite composer? I mean, you've mentioned Gershwin, of course. I mean, he may be one of them. But are there other favourite composers of yours, more classical or more pop or more jazz, or a favourite arranger as well? Someone that you go to and say, "Well, I love. I just love what they do." Um, um, in wine. Oh maybe. gosh, composers. That's tricky. I, I, um, I mean, all of all of the songs that I find generally, um, I, I start. I either hear it on the radio and I think, yes, that would be a good one for for the choir. Um, or I will just just browse around on YouTube and then go down sort of rabbit holes, <laughs> warrens of finding this and then like finding someone I like and then going on finding more stuff that they've done um, to see if there's anything potential there. Um, as far as other arrangers are concerned, um, I guess the, the, the big guys like Roger Emerson and Mac Harthy, you know, they really do um, arrange for, you know, three part community choirs, nothing too taxing for people. But um, Craig, That's you might cool. be very surprised to hear. I absolutely think you're a great <laughs> choir arranger and I've, I've had many of your arrangements um, shared amongst my choir. Um, yes. It, it's um well, I, I love the way you you arrange thank you I was, uh, because before quiet music came along you know dan huff and roger emerson had you know printed matter similar to mm -hmm. what and it was almost the only place where you could get decent stuff isn't it i mean there are yeah you could see arrange arrangements out there on uh she music direct or wherever and they were all mm. they were never written for community choirs you know yeah but the fact is that what we we started this because you know, we wanted to legally share those pop songs that everyone wants to sing. Yeah. In arrangements uh, that are going to be suitable for those for, for those choirs. So. Yeah, and to be able to have them as digital downloads as well. You know, yeah. when you know in the early days, you'd have to when you ordered music, you'd have to wait for it to arrive. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's all like, I need it now. But the choir starts next week or <laughs> whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. So choir community um, and the choice of a choir community as well. It, it's astounding um, and, and with free resources as well, which is even better. Uh, yeah. Yes, um, a big up to everyone who's done something for the uh, RNLI this year, which won't be yeah. free next year, guys. So uh, <laughs> you get your free stuff now while it's still available. <laughs> Once the year's up, uh, then you have to pay for that stuff too. Um, well, that's wonderful. And... I'm interested about your passion. What's your main passion about? I, mean, I think I'm getting some of it already, but can you name a couple of your passions about choral singing? Um, uh, um, you could call it could be social. What, 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 yeah, what I think you float your boat when it comes to doing your choirs. I think what I still find incredible is just the the magic that happens when you know you get say twenty people and. It, and individually, they can't sing, <laughs> you know, um, individually, of course they can sing, um, but it might be a little bit flat or a little bit sharp or a little bit off, um, you know, syncopation might be tricky, but you get a whole crowd of people doing it and somehow they sing in tune, they get the syncopation, it, it um, and, I, and I, I can't even, explain why that happens it just does and I think you know as long as you as the leader have got the patience to just show them how it works how it goes um they get it um so that that's massive for me I I yeah still find that thrilling every week or at the end of every term and we put on a concert and you think that sounded really really good I'm so proud of you <laughs> you know um but I guess that you know with choirs there are just on so many levels you know the the people that come together 
form friendships that they weren't expecting to. I've found friendships that I wasn't expecting. You know, when I started the choirs, I thought, oh, yes, like, it'd be nice to get people singing. But, you know, you actually meet some really, really lovely people along the way um, and, and you're upset for them when, when things happen or, you, you know, you you celebrate with them when, when great things happen. Um, yeah, so those, those are the bonuses of the unexpected joys of running a choir. Um, yeah, that's nice. And then of course, when you have to put on a concert or do something, an event or something, you need more people to help you with other bits, you know, to have those yeah. moments from the choir. That's really important, isn't it? And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's big collaboration ownership, with people. Ownership of, the, of what's going on. Mm. It's, it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, I noticed that a lot of your arrangements, they're great, they're great, they're very clever. And um, uh, the three-part arrangements, so you have SSA and, and, and three-part, is that because of necessity or is that because of um the voices that you have and how did you come about that and um i I want to say now that it's really clever to do a three-part arrangement that really really works well your here comes the sun is fantastic it's got all the elements of the song in it and it's only three parts and i think that is really skillful oh Um, thank you Um, about how did that come about is that something you've thought about or is it just you know as i say because of that's your your voices you know for that yeah for that well, for that particular song, you know, I just sort of started with the melody and and worked around it. And um, but yeah, I've always had mixed choirs, and I've you, you just have to work to the strengths of the people that you've got in front of you. And I try to keep it, you know. So if the sopranos can manage something a bit more complicated, then I'll give them the di- the more difficult bit, um, for example. Or um, and on the whole. SAB works really well because it's quicker to teach because you're only teaching three parts instead of four. Each group is bigger because you're not dividing them into four. Um, so there's it's just a lot of advantages with having three parts. The downside is sometimes, you know, you might lack a little bit of harmony somewhere. Um, but on the whole, if it's the right sort of song, a three part can sound really good. Yeah. Um, for the SSA, I, I think... I write the SSA out because I'm female and I understand the female voice. So, and then, you know, before I was working for choir community, all my recorded voice parts for learning would of course all be in my voice. Um, So I could hear, oh, that would work really well as an SSA because obviously I can hear all three female parts singing together. Um, It's only really when you, you give one of those parts to the men do you know whether it's going to work as an SAB? Um, and then it's great to hear it when it does. And you think, oh, yes, that's that's perfect. Um, that's great that it works. It works both ways. You you have a, a setup there which enables you to easily uh, transfer the parts to other. other yeah, so. well, it, it, it saves a lot of time as well. Because <laughs> if you can do one song amongst different choirs, then um, that's a bonus. As Another well. sign of a good arrangement in my personal <laughs> Thank you. Um, how tell me how did you come across choir community in the first place? Oh, Do you remember uh, what happened? How, um, how you found us? I think it was lockdown, and I think it was a little bit of love, the Graham Kendrick song that you did. You you arranged it. I think he I did. he wrote it. I did it's it's a funny story. That's a lovely story. Um, he'd written a song for for young voices. In fact. Um, which we still haven't done um, uh, for all sorts of other reasons. It's a lovely song, and he he was um, trying to encourage me to sort of uh, promote it, you know. And I was fully behind that. And we were working on it together, doing a few few ideas. Um, I have met him in the past before on a couple of occasions, but we don't know each other that well. And he was very very gracious to come on to come online. And then just as before he just before he clocked off, he said, "Oh, well, Craig, I've got this." little song I wrote yesterday I've, I've no idea what to do with it I, just, I wonder what you think and he sang it to me just on the zoom <laughs> and I could hear the harmonies around it you know I just thought this is just the perfect community choir song it's just like literally what we need to sing right now yeah and um so that day I said look this is this is good do you mind if I just scribble a few parts on this arrange it and then send it to you as an idea so literally that same day I wrote it recorded it and um, I think it was my my daughter. I have various friends and family members who can do soprano parts of me. I can just about manage the alto, so I, I that's how it works. 
and uh, and he loved it. And then um, there was all sorts of reasons why he, it was a good idea to sort of let it out for free to start with. I think you have to pay for it now. And um, and we used it for all sorts of what wonderful events. It was still in lockdown. I don't know. Yes. Whether you we did a world premiere online uh, with our choir in our community choir concert where he came and sang. For some reason, we were all banging saucepans. I can't remember. I mean, the oh. things that we used to do on lockdown. Was, <laughs> it's quite it's a long time ago now, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, thank goodness. <laughs> I'm really impressed that you still, because some of obviously your choirs are remote and uh, or they're not, you know, in one place. And so you still use Zoom for a choir. So that's really fascinating that you still manage that. Do you run that in the same way as we did before with recordings? Um, no, it's probably um, so. The choir that I run on Zoom um, is half and half. So um, every other week it's on Zoom and every other week I go up to Wimbledon. It's a workplace. So um, but the reason for that is we use, I used to go up there every week pre lockdown. And then, of course, no one goes into the office anymore, um, <laughs> generally. Or if they do, you know, it's only like one or two people. So there's never enough of them there to run a choir session. So I go every other week now and people aim to come in on that day. Um, so that's how that works. But when I do a Zoom session with them, it, it's not really the same as what I would have done in lockdown. Um, in lockdown, we would have just sung songs together that everyone knew, um, whereas we are working on individual harmonies in the Zoom session, so I'll just go through each voice part and ask them if everyone's okay <laughs> and they're getting it and they're all nodding. So you just move on to the next song and, and go through each part again. Um, but I still finish them with, um, a, you know, like a pop song that I can see clearly now or one of those sort of songs okay. just for singing. And is that the is that the Royal College of Anaesthetists? No, um, no, this is the Chartered Institute for Professional Development. Wow. CIPD. Um, it is yeah. kind of an organisation that, <laughs> yeah, um, that that companies sign up to. It's and it's all about you know mental health and and good working practice and all that sort of thing. Of course, singing is such a good. So that's why they have a choir just to prove that they're doing they're practicing what they preach. So. Absolutely, that sounds wonderful. What uh, plans do you have for the rest of twenty twenty four? Um, well, next week we're going to Choir Blast. I don't know oh, if you've heard of that. Yes, I know. Yeah, um, it's their I second love, year. I love what Polly does. Is it Polly? Polly? Oh, uh, well, she's um, she's coming to it, um, but it's actually being run by um, another couple of choir leaders in Godalming. Okay. Um, it started last year, and this year apparently they've got 50 choirs going, and last year was three stages. This year there's about five or six stages. Oh, goodness um so my choir I'm taking my choir to that we've, we've got two performances of 20 minute sets and then yeah Polly from the choir leader meetup um she's running a choir of choir leaders yeah. um so we're going to sing three sets of songs <laughs> on different stages so my bit my day's going to be quite busy I've got to get at the right place at the right time I'm still um, waiting for the day when uh, when I'm free on those rehearsals I just haven't been available oh uh, I really, really want to come to that. So uh, uh, yeah, I, I have to say it's lovely singing with with choir leaders, and then obviously socialising with them as well because you get to chat about <laughs> your jobs and yeah. how it's all going. Yeah, so it's really These good. Wonderful groups that 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 came out of um, uh, lockdown are, uh, are so powerful. Now there's you know um, MD Brunch. Yeah. Um, there's uh, uh, the the guys in Bristol, Beth in Bristol. Yes, uh, in, the Inspire Club and the Creative Choir uh, Leader. Yeah, it's, uh, and so it, 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 this this thing this stuff should continue. Hopefully, you know, this the 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 mutual support that, and, mm. that choir leaders can give each other is uh, yeah. Valuable. Well, it's quite a lonely job otherwise, isn't it? And you don't you don't realize there are literally well possibly thousands of people just like you running choirs all on their own. Uh, and then suddenly it's you, there is a community within itself of people who are doing the same as you and yeah it's really refreshing to be able to exchange ideas and yep. and let off steam and all that sort of thing that's one of the um, only good things that came out of lockdown <laughs> yeah 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 so yeah and then um in a in early july we've got our end of term concert um sound bites and i've invited the decibels which is the ladies choir they're going to do a couple of songs for our concert there um 
and the rest of the year I, it will just be back to um, back into the autumn learning some Christmas numbers for the Christmas concert um, oh and I'm also running a, a come and sing Oliver <laughs> oh that sounds good that in August I'm in Surrey yes um, in Bookham Manor House School um, Excellent. what's the date of that we can tell uh, people. that's the 17th of August 17th of August, um, middle of the holidays when yeah yes yeah, so when you haven't had any singing for a few weeks you want to have a bit of a blast what better exactly. than singing, Oliver and uh, I've just sort of um, gone through all the songs just this week actually and they are so fantastic there's such a good collection of brilliant music great words superb, isn't it? so yeah They're one of the best mm, one of definitely the best. well hey it's been lovely to talk to you find out more about you uh, Thank you. Fascinating the way you started your your musical experience and continue that. And um, thank you for coming on board with Quiet Community. We look forward to all your arrangements in the next next few years. I've got plenty to come, so uh, yeah, keep your eyes open. For those. Something you're working on right now that we could give us a little bit of a yeah. Um, so I'm hoping, um, hopefully, if if you know they all get passed through in September, um, I've got four four Christmas numbers coming up. Um, I believe in Father Christmas, rocking around the Christmas tree. Um, they're both a cappella, four parts. Um, uh, Rocket Man, Titanium. Um, oh, just at least eight, I would say. I've got ready. Oh, a couple of Beatles numbers. So um, yes. The, the, the sooner you get them into us, the sooner we can pass them on and get them get them sorted if possible. Hopefully, they, they will be with you in the next week. <laughs> Oh, Hazel, that's that's one. People will be very, very pleased. <laughs> Give him more work to do. Uh, Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, it's been fun. Thank you, Craig. Catching up again soon and seeing. Yeah. See you Brilliant. Thanks ever so much. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.